for listening to the AC Wildcats podcast. Hello, Sheer. We got breaking news. What do we got? Grant Wheatman? Umar Balo will enter the transfer portal. Yep, yep, yep. Well, you know, if you listen to the show, we've told you that uh, that was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we reported it, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it again, with Umar Ballo, leader of men, leaving there. And again, we've got a lot to get to. We're going to talk about names. We know you want names. We're going to talk Kentucky, and we are going to talk a lot of different stuff. But Umar Ballo makes, I mean, listen, I like Umar Ballo, leader of men, a great deal. But at the end of the day, Arizona definitely, uh, I think, wanted two or three years of Mount Crevis and Dylan Anderson, and I have no problem with that. Uh, Yeah. Sorry, I'm just typing it. So there's multiple layers to this. Arizona is okay with this. Like, I want to emphasize, don't, like, kill Umar Balo for entering the portal. Right. Uh, number one, this dude's about to get paid. Big. Like, we're talking over a half million dollars. Yeah, today. I mean, he is getting paid to the point where he would, if Arizona wanted to match uh, it would if he would be the most highly paid NIL athlete at Arizona football yeah. or basketball. Yeah, and you know I I wish him nothing but the best, and I will one thousand percent be rooting for Umar Ballo, leader of men. He was very good for what we needed at the time. I think that Arizona, you know, I think made the right calculation that you can uh, that you know I think that Crevis has a little bit of a higher upside. Dylan Anderson, uh, obviously, I want to get Dylan Anderson on the court as much as possible. Don't worry, everybody. We are going to get to a four-man to talk about. But uh, Umar Ballo, we, I wish him the best. That was a real, you know, that was also a really good uh, Tommy Lloyd just development story. Because I'll be honest with you, um, when he came here, I kind of thought he was going to be a Gene Edgerson type where he's going to throw some elbows, you know, wear the bike knee pads and, you know, not do a ton. He became a difference maker by the end. Yeah, I mean, look, you look at his numbers at Gonzaga, that dude didn't play, right? right. Uh, you know, and, and, and so you went and like, you and I was like, is this Tommy just bringing a dude he recruited or like, is this guy actually good? And you right. watched his high school tape and it was good, but he didn't play at Gonzaga. I love Umar, man. Like I, Umar is the one guy on the team I probably talked to mm-hmm. like as beyond an athlete, you know, like he's met my kids and all that. Right. Like I, I wish the absolute, uh, best for Umar. I, I hope that Arizona fans realize that this is a mutual thing. Yes. Like Arizona is going to be happy for Umar. Umar, this isn't a Umar doesn't have loyalty. Like when I posted this on the board a few days ago, it's like Umar's not loyal. No, that's not what this is. Right. Umar is very loyal. Yes. Again, and he is a, uh, and again, can we get you to say that he is leader of men? He is a leader, man. It's him and Joe Flacco, and that's pretty much that's it. That's pretty much it. Okay. Why do you like Mike Anderson so much? Because he's good. That's why. Um. All right. Now. Let's talk a little bit about this Kentucky opening. Uh, first of all, I did not think that uh, I did not see this actually occurring. I did not. Think Wait, that- you were texting me up until the minute it happened. I just don't see it happening. Sheer. I'm like, Mike, it's happening. <laughs> like, Here's, what Sheer messages. Here's what Sheer messages uh, me. He says, uh, won't happen, but if, uh, if Calipari oh, tells me thing won't happen. No, no, I know. No, I know. I'm giving you credit. You, Shear said, oh. won't happen, but if uh, Calipari were to leave to Arkansas, then uh, everybody, the people are going to be mentioning Tommy Lloyd's name. And I said, won't happen, but if Bill Self leaves to Arkansas, people will be mentioning Tommy Lloyd's name. I thought that was funny at first, but now let's talk a little bit about the Kentucky opening. Um, listen. If you go on, if you go on Kentucky boards, if you talk with people, they are going to shoot for the moon. We'll talk about exactly, you know, what that means for Tommy Lloyd here in a second. But when I say shoot for the moon, I'm talking about people like Billy Donovan. I'm talking about people like uh, Jay Wright. They'll probably uh, give uh, Danny Hurley a call. This is going to be, they are going to exercise as much as possible. And Tommy Lloyd, as much, uh, first of all, I love Tommy Lloyd. I hope he's here for a million years. Tommy Lloyd is not going to be in that innermost priority list initially. It's just not. Well, I I think it would have to be like, Billy would have to say no. Pearl would have to say no. Drew would have to say no. Donovan would have to say say no. no. And then, now the thing that you usually worry about is the same thing that you worry about with Jed Fish, but college basketball is different. It's not the Kentucky, it's who Kentucky hires, right? Right. right. But college basketball is just different. I, I don't see, I really don't see Tommy leaving Arizona. 
Just gonna I think, it. and there's a lot to be said for peace of mind. And Tommy Lloyd has peace of mind at Arizona. Listen, Lloyd's a good dude. Lloyd likes going to get a beer at Bob Dobbs every now and then. And, you know, you can't really do that in Lexington. And here's the other thing that I keep coming back to is that Lloyd can do essentially what he wants at the University of Arizona. He can get what he wants. He can compete for a national championship. He can get the players that he wants. And he is not in the fishbowl that is Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah. And, and like, you have to be a special dude to coach at Kentucky. Like, you've seen Tommy at Bob Dobbs having a beer, right? Like, right? Like, Tommy ain't, Tommy ain't doing that in Lexington, right? right? Like, right. that's why I know you're going to make fun of me, but Sean Miller's been mentioned by other people. It's I know. Just, I didn't want to give you any credit, but I've seen Miller's name mentioned multiple times. I, the only way that could happen is if Sean has changed from his time here. Because he didn't even like eating at restaurants in Tucson. Right. Because he didn't like that. Like, that's why it's got to be like a, like Bruce Pearl at Kentucky right. would be awesome. Bruce is all about being seen. Right. right? Like, mm-hmm. it's got to like Scott Drew. Shit, you got to – when you coach at Kentucky, you have to kiss baby, shake hands on that. And Tommy's pretty good at that. But when Tommy gets defensive, when people are talking about Sweet 16s in yeah. Tucson – we're talking about national championships in Kentucky. Now, one person that I would, and again, we're going to get to the names here in just a second, but one uh, person that I would, if I'm Kentucky, that I would seriously consider, and I don't care what anybody says because I am in it to win it for the next four or five years, Rick Patino. Here's the deal with Rick Patino. I don't care that he is 70. He's still sharp as a tack. I can tell that by watching him. And he would go in there. He would immediately have a national championship contending team because everybody would go there. Rick Pitino, you could do a lot worse than Rick Pitino. Sheer even agrees with me on this. Uh, it would be hilarious and awesome. I actually, after we got off the phone, I texted a few people that would know, and they said there's absolutely no chance Kentucky would do it. But, man, it would be awesome. I right? mean, no. He, no okay, Rick Pitino is the absolute man. And, again, he's very, very good at what he does. Now, he can do what he wants at St. John's and, uh, obviously, um, you know, I think that they're going to, uh, I think they're going to do just fine, but there it is. I do not worry right now about Kentucky for Tommy Lloyd. I mean, obviously as we're in the industry where things can change, things are fluid as uh, Jason Shear likes to say, but you know, that be that as it may. All right. Now we're going to get to some uh, portal names and we're going to get to a little bit of roster, uh, dis- uh, some roster moves. What's that? Do you want to say the other name that entered? Arizona has two names that have entered the portal. Do you want oh, to Grant. take it? I already said Grant. Oh, you said Grant. I just wanted yeah. to make sure I wasn't paying attention. Either. I already said Grant. And oh, you know oh, what? Okay. We wish Grant all the best as we should. Now, one other thing, too. We also wish the BetMGM Sportsbook app the best. This is true, Jason Sure. Always. All right. Now, here's the deal with BetMGM. Sign up for BetMGM. Use bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10. You'll receive up to $1,500 in bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for details. Again, if you want to bet on Arizona or bet against ASU, you're going to want to go to the BetMGM Sportsbook app. Let's hear a great Shane Diefenbach with the uh, disclaimer. Excuse me. Those bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP-ARIZONA. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right, Sheer. Let's get to some names. Let's get to some roster movement. Should we talk names or should we po- talk possible roster moves that might surprise some people? Uh, whatever you want. What do you mean roster moves? Well, We're you done. know, are, are, you know, people that are, hey, you know, people that are deciding, you know, maybe Arizona is a really cool place to be. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start with that. Let's, Let's start with that. that. All right. I am not guaranteeing anything here, so do not be that person that is coming. Mike is guaranteeing this will happen. You heard it here. I am not guaranteeing this will happen, but there is a real possibility that Caleb Love could return to Arizona next year. I did not think that that was going to be the case. I don't think anybody did, but here's the deal. Caleb Love likes the U of A. They like him. He's been a model teammate, and there is a... He's going to, you know, obviously he's going to get feedback, but there is a very real chance that Caleb Love could be the starting shooting guard at the University of Arizona next year. So here's the thing, like 
Remember a couple of years ago, there were rumors Ben might come back. Those were right. never true, right? right? Like, Ben was always leaving. When Zoo left, he was leaving. Like, you just knew. This mm-hmm. is different. Um, I I will say my mom is very upset about Umar. She's blowing up my phone. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will say that he pe- there's people in this camp that believe his NBA feedback will be a little better mm-hmm. than some people think. That, like, he could go in the second round. Uh, if that happens, there's a chance that he goes, you know, to the NBA. Right. But there's also a chance that feedback is not good. Uh, he loves Arizona. Yeah. And they love him, too. And they Arizona. love him. So if that feedback isn't good, let's say he gets it back, let's just say two weeks, mm-hmm. right? And it's not good. I would say that it, it probably becomes 60-40 that he leaves. It's not leaning towards coming back now. It's leaning There's towards There's a leaving. very real – and it, but, it, right. but it grows. But this is a real, a real thing. Right. This is a very real thing. And people are asking, what exactly does that uh, mean for the players on the team? Uh, essentially, uh, Sheer and I were talking about this. If he comes back, then you won't see Boswell and Bradley on the team, in my opinion. I believe that uh, one of them yeah, – I... And preferably, I would like to have Jaden Bradley – and again, we'll talk about somebody else here in a second. But Jaden Bradley, KJ Lewis, and uh, Caleb Love with Joson Sainon coming off the bench. Sign me up for two. And again, another another thing too is that you know he would be on a he would be on a little bit of a I think a better roster per se. I think that he would also be able to I you know hopefully rein things in a little bit. But I would love to have Caleb Love back because you got to remember this. Sure, he's flawed and everything, but he was still a Wooden Award player. I mean, he was a top 10 player in the country by that metric. I, you know, Caleb Love to me, that's one of those ones. Sure, he's not a perfect player, but I would love to have him back. Uh, My mom is like, can't Arizona find more money? He's my favorite. Poor Tina. Right. Poor Tina this year. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Like, if Caleb comes back, I think people need to be prepared that someone's going to leave or or decommit or whatever it may be. Right. Um, Kylan could leave. Jaden could possibly leave. I think Arizona pr- would prefer Jaden. I would say this. Joson Sanin, mm-hmm. he has not signed. Right. Admitted, he has not signed. He could very well say, you know what? I'm going elsewhere. Right? right. Like, there's, there's a possibility... There is no pot. It, it will happen. If Caleb Love returns to Arizona, someone is leaving. Right. Whether it's Sainan, Bosmo, Bradley, someone is leaving. It would not be K.J. Lewis because K.J. Lewis, I think, is a lock to start at the three next year. Yeah, so again, we just wanted to pass along the information for you. This is something, too, that I did not see possibly happening. But the more time goes on as well, the more of a likelihood that he could come back. Because, again, there is a... Uh, he again when you like being at a place when the school likes you as well that's kind of a hard thing to turn away from especially in this day where you can take the covid year and make a lot of money and you know who knows what happened i will say this we'll say this that and this is just speculation but um i would if he were to come back i would imagine that it would i would just say it's more the likely that uh kylan boswell would be the one who would probably leave over Jaden Bradley. That's just a guess. But I would agree with that 100%. Yes. Because based on what they have said for the roster this year, upcoming year, Bradley's the point, Boswell's the two. Mm-hmm. You're not having Boswell running the point again. You just can't do it. You can't. You can't. It's too risky, especially going into the Big 12. Yeah. So you know, it, it just is what it is. You know, at that point. All right. Now. Everybody is interested in a power, like what some power forward names. So let's talk about that. But first, sheer game time. Let's say that you're like Steve Rivera or not like Steve Rivera and you want to get good seats to the final four as opposed to sitting back behind the rafters. Go to the uh, go to game time. They might be able to get you set up in a better deal than having to use the Beanox to go there. Check it out. Game time, my friends. All right, here's the deal. Take the guesswork out of tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PHNX for $20 off. Download game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All kinds of good stuff. Sure. Have you ever used game time? Uh, yeah, no. I haven't, but I know people that have used game time. Is that okay? 
Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So again, check it out. Game time. And one more, the Gila River Resorts and Casinos with the blue little wave. The blue little wave. It's very, very cool. Jacob Franklin has been there before. This is true, Jacob Franklin, correct? Correct. All right. Jacob Franklin called me panicking from the Gila River Resorts and Casinos last week. True story. I think he was there anyway. Wow. Yeah, you know it's bad if he's calling you to panic. Yes, exactly. And he wanted, Jacob Franklin also wanted the, uh, uh, well, in all fairness, it was this massive extension cord that's like 500 feet long that looks like it's like, you could take out like a cobra or something. It's very, very, uh, very important. Oh, you're in your office? I apologize, Jacob. Either way, you do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. All right. Now, power forward talk time. I was... Uh, if, if the internet goes out right now, because I, I don't know if you noticed, it's starting to get a little dark outside, Mike. Right. The eclipse uh, is happening as we speak. Dude, I don't care about the... I'm eclipse. just saying, if the internet gets a little wacky, guys. Right. I'm, I don't care about the eclipse and I've never understood why people care about, I had this guy at the gym today telling me, he's like, Oh, you know, he's like, so what are your plans around uh, 10 30 or whatever? I'm like, I'm going to be working. And he's like, well, aren't you going to step outside? And then I thought, Oh, the eclipse Pfft, who cares. All right. Now power forward names, a name that I was, uh, that I was, uh, tipped off to, I mean, we'll talk multiple names, but, um, uh, somebody that I like more than you do, Jason Shear, that we're going to talk about in depth now. Umar just posted. All right. Trey, oh. Trey Townsend, my friend. Trey Townsend. I love Trey Townsend. I would. I think Trey Townsend would be a great fit. We'll talk other names as well. But I think Trey Townsend would be a great fit at the University of Arizona. I know you're not as big on him as I am, but here's the deal. 17 points, 8 rebounds, and he gave Kentucky the business. He also gave, excuse me, North Carolina State the business as well. Uh, dude, and like I said, he's far from perfect. I get all of that, but sheer... That would be an upgrade at the power forward position. Yeah, I, I think that the thing that Arizona needs to do, first of all, I, I, I kind of need to mention, I think the portal's weak this year. I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's as many big names. Like, you could make the case, a very easy case. Umar's the biggest name in the portal, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like Umar's the best player in the portal right now. Um, right. So... It's not easy to go and grab a four-man, which is really the only priority Arizona has. Um, and so you need, based on your lineup, if you're bringing back Boswell and Bradley and Lewis, the guy needs to be able to score. Like, that is priority number one. And I think when you look at Trey Townsend uh, and you look at his numbers, you know, do I think he's a great fit for Arizona's offense? No, but Keyshawn wasn't either, right? And and it and it works. Keyshawn is never well. dropping thirty-one and twelve on Kentucky. Right, but I, that's what I'm saying. Like Keyshawn couldn't shoot when he got to Ari before he got to Arizona either, right? Like this is a guy that, I mean, we saw him put seventeen up against Kentucky, and it was on forty percent shooting, right? But he still put up seventeen. Like he scored in double figures every single game except for two, and that's because he was in foul trouble. Like. He scored 19 against Illinois, 17 against Ohio State. North Carolina State, he dropped 30 and 13. 28 against Xavier, right? I mean, against now, good teams, he balled out, Sheer. Yeah, now you worry. There's some things you wonder, like the NC State game you mentioned, 30 and 13 is great. He was 11 of 25 from the field, right? And and it's it, the difference, I'm just saying, the difference is like he won't put up 25 shots at Arizona. Um, are they able, but... You could also make the case and say, look, if anything, he would be more efficient because he's surrounded by more talent. I get a guy like Townsend over some other guys that are being mentioned because at least you know Townsend is aggressive offensively. Like, I love Keyshawn and all that, but Keyshawn was never aggressive offensively. He'll be a better defender than Townsend was. Townsend's not an outstanding defender, but Townsend is going to get you points. Yes, Townsend's going to get you points. And again, that's kind of where I'm at. And I also don't think that the shot is broken. He's not a center, by the way. Um, he is a he is a power forward. Ew. And uh, he said, we don't need a center. Oh, what about the Russian center from FAU? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, yeah, Townsend, Townsend is a four. All Townsend, the way. Townsend is a four. And he's somebody that, again, when you can get 
when the offense slows down, something that we've seen in the NCAA tournament three years, actually, well, yeah, three years is that Arizona has had dudes that have struggled to get buckets period. And Townsend is somebody that could get you buckets. And you know, this is with all due respect to Keyshawn. Keyshawn couldn't really get you buckets. Also, I don't care that he's six six. I think that uh, I think that height is somewhat overrated in college. I look at weight more than I do height. He's and when you watch him, he's built like he he just is. He's built. And again, he put up these numbers on. He's put up big numbers against good big boy teams. He put up numbers on DJ I mean, Burns. How how tall is is tech, how technically what was Keyshawn listed at? What six seven two twenty yeah. five? Keyshot is listed as 6'7", 225. Townsend would be listed 6'6", 218. 6'6", 228. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, exactly. So are, we, are we upset about an inch? Like, yeah, you know, I mean, who cares? Exactly. And again, I'm going to keep coming back to it. You put up big numbers on big teams and people. Here's the other thing, too. Yes, he was 11 to 25 against North Carolina State. But you also have a you also have somebody that, you know, is you know, he's a fluid basketball player. That's where I'm at with this. We do agree that he would be an upgrade over Keyshawn Johnson, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. Different player. I mean, look, uh, defensively is an upgrade? No, because I think Keyshawn is, was a very good defender. Offensively, there's no question. It's not even right. comparable. All right. Now, so we will uh, certainly, uh, you know, obviously as this, uh, you know, as things as things progress, we will uh, we'll keep you up to date on that one. Um, why don't we talk a few other names as well? Um, let's uh, why don't we talk your guy, Joshua Jefferson out of St. Mary's. There is a connection there with uh, uh, Arizona. You like Joshua Jefferson. I much prefer Trey Townsend. Uh, I don't like Jefferson. Do you want to know the guys I like? I don't like Jefferson and Jefferson. I'll just say here because I posted it. And I I know <laughs> I know who Arizona is looking at at the four. <laughs> he's not a guy. The rumor is he'll wind up uh, at UNLV. He's actually good friends with uh, um, what's his name, D. Don Thomas, because mm -hmm. they went to the same high school. So, you were trying to push Joshua Jefferson down my throat. I didn't want any. Well, of it. I always look at connections in the portal, and that's Murph's hood, Liberty, right? Mm -hmm. And so you always look at that. My man on the side there. Darlington, we talked about this, dude. Guy. We and I wasn't making that up either. We we talked about. Uh, I think he's a small forward. He played power forward for Hofstra. Two fifteen. Um, but yeah, like I have you grown? Have you grown on him a little? Yeah, bit? Yeah, I watched highlights. He's not bad. He's Actually, not bad. outside of Trey Townsend, who would be my top priority, I would also go with Dar Darlington Dubar. Would be my second. I love Darlington Dubar. Anybody out there? First of all, it's a great name. Second of all, go back and go and watch him a little bit. He's a good basketball player, period. I mean, he's a good basketball player, Jason Shear. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you look for. Uh, as Brogan would say, you look for hoopers. Real hoopers. Yeah, yeah, Brogan. Hey, this guy Brogan, by the way, is really he's a really good dude. He's in our group chat. This guy though will uh, this guy will fall for anybody's highlights. It doesn't matter who it is. He was telling me a while back that uh, that uh, Max Hazard was better, or was it Max Hazard or Jacob Hazard? Uh, who is the one that transferred from UC Irvine? Max. Yeah, he said, dude, look at his highlights. He's a hooper, man. And I was like, eh, I don't know. And he's like, dude, he's the same dude as Will Richardson. Well. Here's um, here's some guys that I would like, okay, right. that I think Arizona should recruit. I'm not saying they are or they aren't, but I think there's some intrigue there. Right. Okay. Uh, Xavier Amos. Mm -hmm. You know who that is? Yeah, I've heard the name. I don't know who he is though. Uh, from Northern Illinois, I think right. he is intriguing. He averaged 14 and six, six eight, two fifteen, stretches the court. I think he's intriguing. Uh, I think the kid at uh Brown is intriguing, mm -hmm. but I can't pronounce his name very well. So yeah, no, you tried to send me that. I don't want any of that. No thanks. Nana Owusu Anene. Yeah, I'm good. No thanks. He averaged 15 and nine. Right. Uh, there's another guy named DJ Burns. He's not the real DJ Burns, but you I can saw that him. DJ Burns. <laughs> Malik Brown is one that intrigues me. The kid How about Dia? You like Dia? That seems like a right up here. Malik Diaz, not bad. This dude, Malik Brown, is actually intriguing. He averages nine and seven and two assists, and he shot 70% last season. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, but yeah, I mean that. But that's what we're talking about too. Like it's not great. Like the number right. one power forward in the portal might be. I'm seeing who twenty four seven. Oh, has. it's Trey Townsend, bro. I'm taking Trey Townsend over any power forward. No, I, I agree. But I, I'm just. I want to see who. Uh, who Is Jordan we have. Brown still? Does Jordan Brown have eligibility no. still? No way. No, no, no. So like we have other guys ahead of him, like the kid. Pucker, DeVries, Kobe Johnson. But Kobe Johnson's not a four-man. He's not a four-man. Yeah. No, so four-man, we have, like, Eric Daly at UCLA. Oh, I, I just gave that away, but he's going to UCLA. Mm-hmm. Look at look at McCronin, by the way. So, yeah, I mean, like, the power forward, like, Omaha Billu from Iowa State. You can't take a guy like that. You, you don't Why? want a guy that averaged two points and three rebounds last well, year? It's not, and he's a freshman, and you're like, okay, he's got a lot of potential. And I completely understand that. The problem is you can't take potential. You right. can't do it in the portal. You don't. If you're going to do that, go recruit high school. Like they need a guy that can score. Uh, when you look at guys that scored in college, that it would translate. Maybe Daly, Michael Ajayi, the guy that's going to Gonzaga is probably close. But Darlington Dubar. Yeah. Like. All right. Now let me ask you this because this is actually a very very good question by somebody uh, on there, Mr. Tyler Warden. You're uh, you have not been posting as much. I need to be able to steal your information. All right. So either way, Trey Townsend would be my guy. Would be my guy. That who is who I would prioritize. Sheer is throughout throughout some other names, but we all agree that Trey Townsend would be the best option. This is correct. What about Umar at the four? <laughs> you imagine, dude, the push shot three pointer. Oh, that would be fantastic. But all right, let me ask you this now, Sheer. Um, oh, I would rather have Townsend than Osabor. I do like Osabor, though, but Townsend is mu- Townsend. Well, is- I, I don't like Osabor. You think he sucks. You don't want him at yeah. all. I think I think he would uh he would suck at a school like like the Big 12. Like it's I don't know. I'm not a big Osabor guy. All right, fair enough, fair enough. But um, we just, I just wanted to throw some stuff out there. Now let's talk about a, uh, let's talk about a little bit of a possible roster combinations for next year. But first, Hmm, what we should we do here? Have we already done illegal Pete's? No, we have not done illegal Pete's illegal Pete's. All right. Jacob Franklin, Jacob Franklin has been to illegal Pete's Jason Shear, Have you been to illegal Pete's? It's been a bit, but I have been, I was right. next door to it yesterday as well. All right. Were you? Or, yeah, Saturday, because Saturday was wild. Campus was ridiculous. Dude, that was insane. I got down for football practice early, and I messaged Sheer, and I was like, what the hell is all this going on here? It was some, what was it anyways? It was, it was admitted students day. So basically, if you got admitted, yeah. you went, you got tours and all that. Uh, but it was jammed. And then, I just, I don't know. Look, I'm going to sound like an old pervert, but whatever. It was hilarious, because they were giving tours by Lowell Stevens or whatever. Football practices out, all that, and then it was sorority flag football day. And the 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 young teenage were you out men, there scouting? No, the the young teenage men that were we were cracking up because those boys did not give two craps with their tour guide right outside the sorority football games to say the men were all literally just watching them play. It was hilarious. Yeah, well, again, you're always out there scouting good football players. I mean, seriously, you know, like I was the one pushing Don Staley to Kentucky. I mean, you know, let's. Uh... By the way, think, oh, truthfully, I don't know. We won't go there. All right. Well, probably best. Okay. Now, Illegal Pete <laughs> is here to bring you a win with their legendary sound check deal. Bring in your ticket stub from any ticketed event and get a beer, draft beer, or house margarita for a penny. Illegal Pete's wants to celebrate with you, whether it's a pregame or a postgame party. They got you covered on all of your game day needs. Must purchase adult entree to redeem Illegal Pete's sound check deal. Illegal Pete's your go to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. Let me ask you this, Jason Shear. I'm going to throw out a starting lineup, just a possibility starting lineup. Again, this is just in theory. Jaden Bradley, Caleb Love, KJ Lewis, Trey Townsend, Mount Crevis. What would you think of that lineup? That's a top 15 team, right? That's a top 10 team, isn't it? Yeah. And you know what? what's also exciting about it, too, is it's built for the Big 12. Yeah. That's I mean, a really good lineup, dude. I mean, that's a really that's a and you know what it is too. That is a tough lineup. Now, listen, I I know there's some questions about uh, you know Mount Crevis, but I think Mount Crevis is going to I think Mount Crevis is going to really surprise some people next year because again, I think people look past it. The dude has got skills. I mean, he really does. He can do things. Uh, he can do things that other players just can't necessarily do. 
Arizona, first of all, what I would suggest to everyone is I know you saw Cree this last year. Go watch film of some of the stuff he could do when he was playing overseas. I'm not saying he'll be able to do it so easily in college, but just what he did. Like, I don't think people realize, like, the dude could hit jumpers, yeah. right? Like, like we saw – remember we saw when they opened practice the one time and he hit, like, a 12-foot fadeaway jumper from the baseline? <laughs> He, he, and it was fluid too. It wasn't like it was some mechanical yeah. thing. You're like, what the hell is this? Right. It's like they think a lot of Crevis. Like they think he'll be good next year. They think he's going to be really good in two years. And so that's one of the reasons why they're not crying over Umar leaving because basically, if Umar came back, Crevis was going to leave. And Arizona wants multiple years of Crevis over one year of Balo. Plus, they don't want it to cost $750,000. And they believe Crevis, if they didn't believe Crevis wasn't that good, they would have gone and got another center out of the portal. And what he's got to do with Crevis is, again, Crevis was going to take a year to develop. I think people need, you know, people need to get that. Now, Marcelo Martinez, the great Marcelo Martinez, um, worried about the shooting. This is something that Kobe Thiel always uh, messages me as well. Here's where I'm at. Yes. I want people to be able to shoot the ball. To me, it is more important to get bucket getters. Look at Arizona last year. You had three guys in the starting lineup that all hovered around 40% from three. Pella Larson, Keyshaw Johnson, Kylan Boswell. Guess who didn't care about that? Clemson. Guess who decided they were going to zone Arizona? Clemson. Guess who was the only person that was going to be able to score? The guy who couldn't shoot, Jaden Bradley. So, I again... I like to have shooters. I want to have a shooter, but I need dogs, man. I need dudes that can get buckets, Sheer, and you agree with this. Yeah, just go score, right? Score. Like, that's it. I don't care if it's a three, a two, whatever it is. Go get me a bucket, right? right. And that's one of the reasons why, look, we'll just say it. The only, like, Jaden Bradley, yeah, he had a three during that sequence against Clemens, Clemson, but it was more of, I'm going to go get a bucket. You're going to foul me. I'm going to get to the rim and score. If I need it, just go get me a bucket. And when you look at UConn, I realize, and in, in Purdue, I realize how well they shoot. I get it. But at the end of the day, they got guys that are going to go get buckets, whatever they may be. Right. And Arizona just didn't have that last year. So, I mean, again, that's where I'm at. I understand the shooting thing, but I also think people get a little bit, and I say this respectfully because you are all smarter than me. I think people conflate the NBA game with the college game way too much. The NBA game is obviously all about spacing. It's not, the college game is still not really that. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. But that lineup to me, I believe that that lineup would, uh, uh, I just, what one thing now? Let's talk about Caleb Love for a second. Um, one thing that I would like from Caleb Love, and we're talking about, you know, obviously this. I like Caleb Love a lot, but one thing that I would like Caleb Love to do, and I would if he came back, and I'd like Tommy to be able to work with him as well on, is I would want I would like him to be able to get to the hoop more because again, he can get to the basket. He's good when he gets to the basket. I think he settles too much. I would work on that, and I would tell him, I'd be listen, man. You're a dude. I need shooting you. I need you shooting six to eight free throws per per game because you have the ability to get to the rack. It's not like you're some stiff that can't get to the rack. That would be my big thing if Caleb Love did come back. That I'd want him attacking the rim more. Yeah, you got You got to go. You just got to go to the rim. Like against Clemson, it was so frustrating, and it was even more frustrating when you hear Clemson's coach after the game being like, "Yeah, we couldn't guard him." So we went right. to the like go to the basket and and look like. I think KJ will be that guy next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope he doesn't think that he's all of a sudden going to become a 40% jump shooter, you right. know, from three. I think he's capable of hitting more jumpers, but go, he's, he's capable of what more jumpers? What'd you just say? Hitting more jumpers. Okay. I thought you said something else. Sorry. What is wrong with you? I, I'm, an, I'm a good kid. <laughs> uh, but like he went to the rim when he got in, right? Like Jaden will go to the rim. Boswell, I don't know what he'll do, but. Ta whatever power forward they have, you hope will go to the rim. If Caleb Love is back, yeah, you're not going to take the floater and the threes away from him, but go get fouled a little bit more. Go get fouled a little bit more. We do not ask for much. Get fouled a little bit more. That is, again, also, the NFL draft party is coming up. Jacob Franklin, do you have a graphic for this PHNX event? Actually, I believe it's sold out already, but it still want to flex this a little bit. I don't know if Jacob Franklin has one for this. But you should be following PHNX for all of the NFL draft stuff. They are killing it right now, the Cardinals. And I will say this, 
Arizona is going to have players that uh, Jacob Franklin, he just said, I don't Arizona is going to have players drafted this year in the NFL draft, which is going to be odd, which is going to be super, super weird sheer from Jacob Cowling to Jordan Morgan to Tanner McLaughlin. We've got guys that are going to be drafted. It's going to be weird. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's in, and it's going to happen every year now, right? Like it's, it's weird, but I actually will watch the NFL draft this year. I usually don't because I don't really care, but I, I care this year. So I will watch it. All right. Now, uh, as far as I have not heard anything, we're getting questions about Pella. Pella is not, will not be coming back. I would be, uh, I haven't heard anything to that regard about Pella, Lo- uh, Pella love <laughs> Pella Larson coming back. Um, and honestly, I think that's one where it's, it, it you know, it's just kind of time. It, um, he's, he's good. He's good, but you know, kind of limited to a certain degree. I would rather have Caleb love and I would rather have KJ Lewis on the perimeter. What say you Jason Shear? Uh, yeah, it's just time for Pella. I, I think, I don't, I think Pella's going pro. I don't, I haven't heard anything about the portal at all. Maybe he changed his mind, but like we were tipped off to Umar and posted it a few days ago. Uh, I haven't heard anything on Pella. Pella hasn't even come up. He's probably in New York, Nick. I'll just He's, be honest. Uh, he probably would. Would you? Would you, Pella Larson starting a shooting guard next to uh, J- uh, Jaden uh, or uh, uh, Jalen Brunson? Yeah, I would assume Pella will average at least fifteen for the Knicks, who just got fined. Not happy about this situation. Yeah, yeah. Who ca- Yeah, who cares? That's right. now. Would you take? Uh, oh, real quick, Bronny James. Does he end up at Arkansas? <laughs> no, no. Why not? It'll be. It'll be USC again because I heard Muss is on his knees begging. Uh, Muss it'll and LeBron, be come on, dude. Let's be honest here. Muss and LeBron. Uh, it'll yeah no. I I, I think Ohio State, uh, Michigan, or uh, Nebraska. No, Duquesne. 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 Yeah, I was gonna say. So can you imagine Bronny you playing Nebraska? If you got a backdoor promise, right? And you from a, from an NBA, if LeBron said, "Look, man." I got two years left of my deal. If you draft Bronny, you have my word that in two years I will come to your franchise. How many NBA teams would draft in Bronny? Two years? Two years. 41 or 40. What's his deal? How many years is left in his Lakers deal? I think he can re- I think he could leave after this year, honestly. Okay, so let's just say this year then. Yes, yes, yes. I draft Bronny. I draft him in the second round, though, and I would sit him at the very end of the bench and I would say, do not come over next to the real players. <laughs> but uh I would absolutely I would draft. I mean, seriously, if I can get LeBron James, who it's wild, and again, we're going off tangent here, but who cares? Because that's what we do. If uh I don't, never. LeBron James still one of the 10 best players in the world, which is just wild to think about with what he can do. I mean, dude's still averaging 28, eight and eight. If I can get a guy like that and I can, I just have to draft his kid and put him at the end of the bench. Cool. I'll take it. But then you wonder, like, let's say you're, you're the worst team in the NBA, right? Like would Braun really be happy there? No, but I'm not going. Well, it's weird. It's a weird situation. Right. I don't think if you're the, uh, I don't, oh, I got this This draft feedback is non-existent. Let's be honest. It's I got one a- for you. I got one for you that could be fascinating. And it, speaking of the worst teams in the league, the Spurs. I don't think Popovich would do it. I don't know. I think they have a real, real healthy respect for each other. I yeah, but really- they're all in on the rebuild, right? right. Yeah. Although but- I will say if you could add LeBron, to what? Yeah, actually, that'd be disgusting. Dude, you take that. If you get LeBron James, dude, you imagine the IQ on the court with LeBron James and uh, Victor Wembanyama, and then whoever they draft this year too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and here's what's yeah. wild about. And yeah, what is Mikhail, by the way? It, uh, um, but uh, with LeBron though, the thing that's also still amazing about him though is just the way that he impacts the game everywhere. Like, and he still plays. Like, did you see Anthony, Anthony Davis reaggravated an eye injury? What? Uh, yeah, He's yeah. Hurt? Yep, he got hurt hard. To Holy, believe. that's big. hard to believe. But either way, we'll keep you up to date on that. Sure, it will be coming back on Wednesday and Friday this week. This is true. You've already committed. I've already asked you in person. Uh, no, you didn't. That was last week. No, 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 no. I asked you in person, and you committed, Jason Shear. Oh, okay. <laughs> We did very good. We did very good work today, all of you. Wanted to be able to give you a little bit of insight. A little bit. Hopefully, uh, Arizona is uh, back. The A again. This is 
listen, I know it can be torturous being an Arizona fan. This is the life we signed up for, and we wouldn't trade it for anything. This is true, Sheer. Uh, yes, this is it. This is what we do. This is it. All right. Now, on that note, uh, Jason, oh, Jason Shear, where can they find you? Uh, looking at this eclipse in a minute, wildcat30.com, the Wildcat Scoop podcast with Shelby. Oh, by the way, was there another SpaceX? Was there another SpaceX yeah. thing? Was that yeah. a SpaceX thing that I took that picture of? Yeah, we all, we all, we all tweeted our pictures at the same time. But the one that was like three days ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you covered. All right. Totally. Okay. All right. Well, check I'll it out. All right. Now, on that note, we will be signing off. But again, everybody out there, we appreciate you all. We'll be back with you tomorrow. For Jason Shear. I'm merely Mike Luke, the great Jacob Franklin behind the scenes, providing all the technological support and absolutely none of the moral support. You've been listening to the AC Wildcats podcast. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 